So how does this work in the real world? Take a car manufacturer making cars for shipment all over the world. At some point we need to place a SIM card inside each one of these cars, but we cannot do that until we know which country the car is going to. If the car is going to North America, for example, we may want to use one of the American operators for that SIM card. The problem comes on the production line, we need several piles of SIM cards, typically one pile for each country, and that represents a logistical challenge for the car manufacturer. Worse still, it's not actually the SIM cards, but it's the wireless modules supplied by the Tier 1 manufacturers. So how can we improve things? Imagine we could reduce that pile of wireless modules down to one, and inside each car we place a SIM chip. Now those SIM chips have a bootstrap profile, as shown in yellow, but much later on in the production cycle we can decide which actual profile, which we call an operational profile, to download. So, for the car going to North America, we may choose the red operator, and the car going to South America, the blue operator. You can see already, one of the main benefits of remote SIM provisioning technology is late-stage programming of M2M devices. Later, when there are millions of cars in the marketplace all over the world, how does that car manufacturer, if they want to, change from one operator to another at the end of their contract? Well, in today's world of removable SIM cards, that's almost impossible. Because to access the car, you need to send an engineer to it. Or you need to wait until the car comes in for a service. But even then, the wireless module is buried deep inside the car and may not be accessible. So how does GSMA Embedded SIM improve this? Well, all cars will have a SIM chip instead of a removable SIM card. And you can see here that all these cars are linked to the red operator. If the car manufacturer chooses to, at the end of their contract, they simply have to set up a new contract, in this case with the blue operator, and then arrange for a transfer from the red operator to the blue operator for all those SIM chips in the cars. Now that transfer will not be instant, it may take a few days, but it's certainly possible to change from one operator to another using this method. Remote SIM provisioning technology, of course, is not limited to the automaker industry, and here are some examples of early market adopters of this technology.